This video series is broken into three parts um, and covers the process of creating height blended materials um, in addition to allowing you to have a total of four variations um, on the material itself using vertex painting. Uh, several of the topics that are covered in the series uh, include advanced topics that I've covered in other videos in this channel. Um, I'll try to provide a quick overview as opposed to going in depth on some of these topics. Um, however, in the description of each of the videos, you'll find uh, links to the videos that cover these topics more in depth. Um, in part one, we cover the basics of height blended materials, um, authoring your meshes and your materials and what you'll need for that. In part two, we'll create a simple master material um, to show the setup for blending the two materials together. And then finally, in part three, we're going to cover creating a more complex material um, that will allow for blending of not only the two base materials, but two variations on top of those base materials, giving you a total of four materials that you can blend together. So let's get started. So to get started, we need to run over a couple prerequisites for how you need to set up your meshes and your materials to be able to use this, um, this layered method. So um, real quick, we'll jump over. I'll show you the material that we're gonna be using in this example today can be found on uh, Substance Source, um, and it's this wall tile unstuck. Um, so I'll put a link in the description just to uh, where you can find it easily, but if you just search for wall tile unstuck, um, it'll be the first one that pops up here. So um, let's go ahead and start with the materials that we'll need. Um, so this is the actual substance itself opened in Substance Player, which Substance Player is free, um, and uh, you guys can easily use this for it as well. So uh, here is that unstuck tile that we started with, um, and in particular, um, I, I find this one to be a, a great example. It could be whatever you want. Uh, the workflow is going to be the same, but for this one, I'm, I'm simply just adjusting this broken tiles parameter. So you can see if we scale this all the way down to zero, we'll get that clean tile, which is kind of our base, and then we can ramp this guy up to then get a broken tile. Um, and of course, with this particular substance, um, we're going to get our normal outputs, our roughness, our metallic, and our height. Uh, it's very critical that um, in in addition to the base uh, textures that you'll need anyways, with your base color, roughness, metallic, um, ambient occlusion, so on and so forth, the height map is one of the critical ones. Um, there's a few different workflows for this, but uh, for the sake of this tutorial kind of walkthrough, um, this is why we're going to use this one because we do get a height map. So if I change this back down, I'll get my base. Um, and then just pretty straightforward process, same thing. Uh, we'll just export as a bitmap, specify our folder, our file path, and we'll just make sure that we have all of our channels selected. Um, and then that will get us our textures. Now, um, this is kind of outside the scope of this particular tutorial, but when we export out, for example, our ambient occlusion, roughness, and metallic, they're going to be individual maps. Uh, later on, you'll find that we actually combine those into a layered texture. Um, I'll put a link in the description below as well, but as I would mentioned earlier, um, there are some more advanced topics that I cover on this channel, um, including um, there's a free tool that I've created that you guys can download to be able to combine those together into a single map help save on your texture memory. Um, we're not going to walk through that in this one, uh, but if you look in the link description, um, you'll be able to see how to do that. So, okay, so that's that's kind of the first setup is that we want to export out um, these variations. So we would do um, a variation for our clean, which we can see here, and then we would also export um, our textures for um, kind of our, our broken, our distressed one. Um, so then that should get us started with our textures. Now, um, let's actually jump over real quick and I'll show you. Um, so this is in Maya. Um, one of the other prerequisites that you're gonna need to have with, um, with using this, uh, this method for layering textures, because we're blending with vertex colors, it's important that you have vertices. Now, um, you can probably see from, from this that we've got this, this kind of test cube and they're just two of them slammed together, exact same ones. Um, if I jump back over to Maya, something that's really important to note here is that because we're using vertices as our kind of mask to show and to hide, it's important that you have those vertices there. So just be aware that by using this method, you can get some great results, but you need to make sure that you have vertices there. Um, so that's what all these edge loops are. So I have this, this information. Um, I, I won't show it in here, but 
you know, if I were just to use a, a standard cube right, we'd have a vertice in the upper corners and then two in the lower corners, um, which means I could only paint on those four spots. So uh, just make sure that your meshes, when you use this, that you have um, enough vertices there to kind of give you the method that you want. Um, second to that, and, and what we'll see later as we set up the material, is that because we're using a height blend and not just vertex masking, we're going to get some of those really small details, right? So in our height map, those subtle changes in height will help our blending. So then that way we don't have to have a ton of vertices, but we're still going to need um, those vertices there. So, okay, so that should cover the prerequisites in terms of all of the, uh, the textures, the materials that we're going to need, um, as well as our mesh setup um, for how we're going to do blending. So um, that covers this one. So what we'll move on to in the second part now is actually creating our master material to be able to support all this.